as far as the whole Jesus Christ coming down and paying for our sins, will that have to happen? For example, if I, you know, convert to the, to the uh, Latter Day Saint Church and I, you know, I start becoming a, you know, good Mormon. I get sealed. Me and my wife get sealed in the temples. I get, you know, godhood status, and I have my own spirit children. They go to receive their bodies on an earth. Will there also have to be a Jesus Christ, you know, quote unquote, that'll have to go and die for their sins? I think that also makes sense too, in my opinion. My name is Elder Johnson. I am 19 years old, and I am from Southern California in a town called Ridgecrest. Okay, and how long have you been a Mormon? Uh, my whole life. Okay, my name is Elder Adams. I'm also from Southern California, a town called Temecula. I'm 19 years old, and I've been a member. I was baptized at 8 years old, so I guess I've been a member since I was 8. How many times have you read the, the Book of Mormon through? Probably a good five or six times. Five or six times. How about the Doctrines and Covenants? Uh, about the same. Okay, and then the Pearl of Great Price? Probably about three, not as much. Three times not as much? Yeah. And then how about you? How many times have you read through the Book of Mormon? Um, too many times to count. Okay. <laughs> I read it every night with my family throughout the time I was growing up, so I don't really know what number, but quite a few times. How about the Doctrines and Covenants? Um, not as many, but uh, quite a few. And then how about the Pearl of Great Price? Just a few times. Just a few times? Yeah. Okay, Elder Johnson, how many times have you read through the Bible? I've read through it a lot. I love the Bible. Um, probably six or seven times. Read through the Bible six or seven times? Yeah, that's both the New and the Old Testament, correct? Yes, both the yeah. Old and New. Okay. Elder Adams? Um, I've read the Old Testament and the New Testament. Um, I've read the Old Testament all the way through once, and I've read through the New Testament numerous times. Obviously, um, LDS doctrine is different than, than maybe Baptist doctrine. So as far as salvation, how does one get to heaven? And I know you guys believe in, in, in multiple heavens or multiple kingdoms. So why don't you go into a little bit of uh, detail about that, about the different levels of, of glory and how one gets there. Yeah, definitely. So I brought with me this pamphlet um, explaining a little bit about um, the degrees of glory. Um, so there's three different kingdoms, the celestial, terrestrial, and the telestial kingdom. The celestial kingdom is where Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ reside. And we believe if you live according to the gospel of Jesus Christ and are cleansed from sin by the atonement, you will receive a place in this, the highest kingdom. And that's what makes the plan of salvation possible, is only through the atonement of Jesus Christ. It's only by the blood of Jesus Christ that we can go to heaven. And you'll live in God's presence and know complete joy in that kingdom. Um, now, as far as the middle kingdom, the terrestrial kingdom, would you like to read that, Elder Johnson? Oh, yeah. All right. So, the terrestrial kingdom is people who refuse to accept the gospel of Jesus Christ, but who live honorable lives will receive a place in the terrestrial kingdom. Yep. And um, the lowest kingdom is the celestial kingdom. Would you read a little bit more about that? Yeah, that's uh, those who continue in their sins and do not repent will receive a place in the celestial kingdom. So if somebody wanted to go to the celestial kingdom, what do they have to do? They, they have to accept the gospel of Jesus Christ and they have to repent um, and be baptized by somebody um, holding the authority, um, the priesthood authority that God gave his apostles. And um, yeah, I mean, we know now there's different things, obviously, like we believe that you also need to be married in a temple to go to that kingdom. But we also believe that infants, people who didn't get to come of age, weren't able to be baptized, those people were innocent and that they get to go to the, the celestial kingdom as well. People who are innocent. There are people who are mentally handicapped, who won't be able to be baptized or go to the temple. Those people also receive a place in the celestial kingdom. So God is very understanding. He's very knowing. You know, he understands what your circumstances. Do you guys believe in hell? Um, you know, it's kind of, with those three degrees of glory, it can be a little complex. Some people might describe the Telesio Kingdom as kind of like a hell because you would kind of think to yourself, man, I could have done so much better, you know? So in that sense, it's kind of like hell, you know? Do you believe in a place of, of literal fire where souls are tormented for eternity? No. Do you believe in a place called outer darkness? Yes. Describe outer darkness. So outer darkness 
is those, because we believe in the plan of salvation before we came to this earth, there was a great war in heaven. And that there are two plans presented. Satan had his plan that everyone would go to this earth, nobody making any bad decisions, that all would return to Heavenly Father. And the glory would be given to him, Lucifer. Whereas Jesus Christ, he gave the glory to God and he said, everyone will get to go to church, go to the earth, sorry, and make their own choices. And that way it'll be more fair and everyone will have their agency to be able to choose from right or wrong. And whoever does choose to do good will be able to return um, to God's presence. Now there were people who thought that Satan's plan was good because, you know, everybody would be able to come back to God. Everybody. Um, but he would, of course, Satan was selfish. That was the path of the way of selfishness. But those who chose his plan were those who went to outer darkness. Okay. Anything else you want to add to that, Le Johnson? I mean, I cannot describe outer darkness. I haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah, I've not been there. But, I mean, yeah, it's the people who decided to follow Satan will be the ones who are in outer darkness. You know, we aren't the ones who judges who goes into which kingdom or into outer darkness. That is up to God himself. Sure. Are there any um, people alive? Are there any people who would have lived on the earth who would also go to outer darkness? Um, that's a question I don't completely understand. Um, I mean, I wasn't taught fully, but um, maybe perhaps those people who... Um, you know, commit unpardonable sins, like denying the Holy Ghost, those people who continue in their sins after they have a perfect knowledge, because that, you know, is a very unforgivable sin, denying the Holy Ghost. So maybe perhaps in the future those people could go to outer darkness as well. Describe what baptism for the dead is. So what baptism for the dead really is, is you get somebody who, after the person is dead, we like to wait about, I mean, in our church, uh, we wait until a year after they have been dead, um, and then we do the baptism for the dead. And how it works is, basically, in our in our temples, um, we have a baptismal font, just like a lot of churches have, and somebody has to baptize another person in place of that person who is dead. We don't we don't dig up the person, you know, and throw them into a baptismal font and baptize the skeleton or whatnot. That would be silly, but. We do it in place of the person, and that's that's all there is to it, really. So why don't you guys just kind of talk about eternal progression and what that exactly means to uh, to a Mormon? So a lot of Christians look at um, being a child of God as for those who have accepted Christ into their life. Um, we accept that too, um, but we also take it very seriously. You know, we all of us are children of God, and God created us in His image. And if we choose to live in harmony with God's teachings and commandments, we can become like God. It's not to be confused with polytheism, though. You know, we're not saying that, oh, it's all just multiple gods from here on out. We're all our own Heavenly Father here, you know. But uh, that's just my take on it. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> can we talk about um, Jesus's progression? Um, so Jesus, so kind of take us through, because Jesus is our example of what can happen to a man um, through eternal progression. So maybe talk about Jesus a little bit, how he his progression started, kind of where Jesus got his beginning, what he did on the earth to gain eternal progression, and where he is now. So Jesus is equal with God. He was since he came to the earth. You know, he is, he is God. Um, and we just believe that... Um, we believe in God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, and that all three of those are God. Um, we believe basically what every other Christian faith believes, that they are all God, um, but except w with one thing, we believe that they are three separate beings. And that's really the only separation of belief with our church, other than other churches, on that belief. So you're not Trinitarian? Um, no. Um, but it's not to be also it's not to be confused with polytheism because we believe they're one God with one purpose. Mm -hmm. They're just one in purpose, one in not purpose. one in being. Yes. Okay. As far as <clears throat> Jesus Christ gaining eternal progression, what would he have had to do on the earth that we would need to emulate for him to gain eternal progression? Well, Christ, Christ was baptized. He 
Um, it was commanded of him. He was perfect. He didn't need to be baptized, but he still got baptized anyway. So we got to all do that. Um, and he was also resurrected. And we we're all going to be resurrected too, whether it's our choice or not. We're all, we believe that all of us can be resurrected. Now, it's not, resurrection isn't exaltation, but we believe that everyone will have, even people who might have led less honorable lives will be able to be resurrected, but that doesn't guarantee exaltation. You know, so we believe that um, because Christ was resurrected, and if we emulate those at that attribute, if we do that, which we will, and we also need to be baptized, that's our steps towards, um, that's, well, <laughs> we have to follow that example. Um, I don't know. I hope that isn't like skirting around your question or nothing. <laughs> so when, if, so let me ask you this. If Jesus gained eternal progression and, and became and got Godhood status, um, he would, if, if we're to gain that same status, we have to be married. So do you believe that Jesus Christ was married in order to gain his eternal progression? I don't know if Jesus Christ was married. I, I wasn't actually taught about that. Um, and there will be people who, you know, haven't been able to be married in this life. Um, I don't know if Christ was married. I can't really answer that. Do you have anything on that as far as was Jesus Christ married in order to gain eternal progression? You know, I don't know. And there's no really scripture in the Bible that says he was, but that doesn't mean he wasn't. So he could have and he could not have. Yes, he could have. So would it be okay with you guys if he was married? That would be okay with me. Christ was the perfect example. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And if he was married, was there the potential of having children? I think he could have, yeah. Yeah. Does Jesus Christ have a wife now? Um, if he got married, then yeah. And if he didn't, then he doesn't have a wife? Um, I guess not. We believe that you also need to be married in the temple to go to that kingdom. God, the Heavenly Father, would have had to come through eternal progression as well, correct? I, I believe so. Okay. So would he, that means he would have at one time been a man, correct? It's not too far-fetched in my opinion. And Heavenly Father created us, correct? Um, yeah, he gave us bodies, yeah. Um, as far as, like, giving us spirits, I don't know if he necessarily created our spirits. Um... But I know that we live the spirits. I can't really go further back than that because I can't remember it. Because, you know, we believe that when you came to this earth, there was a veil that, you know, cleaned, like basically wiped your memory of all that. So you can't remember living with God. So I can't really speak about that. I don't know exactly how our spirits came about. Um, but I know that we live the spirits with Heavenly Father. So I've heard some people say, and I don't know if there's any clear verse or anything, but that Heavenly Father has a wife and that we came about, we're spirit children of Heavenly Father through Him and, you know, our, th this woman, His wife. Yeah. So have you guys ever heard that? I've heard it before. Um, <clears throat> Do you believe that? I think we could have an, I think we have an, a Heavenly Mother. A Heavenly know? Mother. But I believe that, um, you know, with, I think we try to, we treat her with a lot more respect um, not a lot more respect, but we treat her with a big sense of reverence. You know, we don't really preach about her, talk about her, because and I think Heavenly Father, he didn't really, like, publicize that he had a wife or that we have a Heavenly Mother, because God, a very omniscient man, you know, he, I mean, God is God. He knows everything. Mm -hmm. And he knew that, um, you know, men pervert things, and so he wouldn't want his wife, the Heavenly Mother, to be spoken of in an irreverent kind of way. So that's why we don't really preach about Heavenly Mother. There is a hymn in our church. Um, I really like it. It's in the song called, Oh My Father. It's hymn number 292. It says, In the heavens are parents single? No, the thought makes reason stare. Truth is reason, truth eternal. Tells me I have a mother there. So that kind of hints at like, oh, there could be a heavenly mother, you know? Now, as far as eternal progression, um, let's talk about our, because we talked about heavenly fathers. We talked about Jesus Christ. Now let's kind of talk about ours. Um, when it comes down to our progression, um, we become like God. Um, we will also have our spouse for time and eternity, correct? Yeah. Will we also have spirit children in eternity? I think so, yeah. 
you believe that as well? Yes. Okay. So talk about that. Is there like, um, because there's a lot of speculation, you know, things get, you know, people say stuff about me all the time, you know, will you Baptists believe this? We don't believe that, you know. Yeah. So, so you do, guys do believe that there is a progression to where you guys have a spouse to return to one spouse or multiple spouses? Um, I, as far as I know, we're only going to have one spouse. Okay. Yeah. But as far as children, you know, we believe that um, God wants us to be happy, and I believe that true happiness can come from your family, so you should be able to have children in the afterlife as well. Okay. And as far as them being spirit children, is there like another thing that happened with this earth where they go and receive bodies so they can become like gods as well? Um, do they get Do they get to eternally progress? I, yeah, I believe so if they choose. I mean, like... You know, it's up to you if you want to choose to be righteous and eternally progress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they get sent to a to a place that they can also have human bodies to where they can also. Do they come to this earth? Um, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, okay. that's that's way far ahead in the future, but right. Um, but I, I, it makes sense that you know you'd be able to have children who'd be able to live on an earth. On oh, okay. Um, all right. And so as far as, because I honestly don't know the answer to this question. Yeah. Um, as far as the whole Jesus Christ coming down and paying for our sins, will that have to happen? For example, if I, you know, convert to the, to the uh, Latter-day Saint church and I, you know, I start becoming a, you know, a good Mormon, I get sealed, me and my wife get sealed in the temple, so forth and so on. <clears throat> I get, you know, godhood status and I have my own spirit children. They go to receive their bodies on an earth. Will there also have to be a Jesus Christ, you know, quote unquote, that'll have to go and die for their sins? I think that also makes sense too, in my opinion. You know, my personal belief. Mm -hmm. I mean, it don't make sense if that's if that was God's plan here. Um, what's this? Who's to say that there that couldn't be? If there was an, another Earth, mm -hmm. um, you know that how that could happen as well. You know, or that that could have happened on other planet, other Earths before us. Right. Who's to say? Sorry. What do you think maybe some of the, the differences are between um, LDS and, and Baptist, Baptist doctrine? One of the big differences I can think of, and it's brought, been brought up to me a few times, is, uh, you know, is being saved by grace. You know, we all believe that we can be saved by grace, but one of the things we believe in is we also have to do our part. You know, yes, we are saved by grace, but, you know, we have to endure to the end or be like Jesus, you know. Just try to be good people. Um, we don't believe that you can earn your way into heaven, kind of like what we talked about earlier. Yeah. But, yeah, he just do what's right. Be a good person, you know, read your scriptures, go to church, pray, you know, follow the commandments.